We're here with D-Ray and I made him hold that thought and I want you to tell me, your uh, we're talking about your first time on stage, mm -hmm. your joke's not hidden, you saying they're funny. Yeah, 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 they, they're okay. They're okay. For what I'm, for, for what I'm used to now. Well, we're not... No, I'm saying if I was a judge or what the audience, um, what I saw before me. Right, okay. The comics up uh, that went on stage, for what I'm feeling or what, you know it. Right. We read the, reading the room. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Uh, it's just two guys and they start heckling me. Oh, they're like, no. They're like, da, 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 you're not funny, man. You better go back to your joke book. And out of nowhere, <laughs> out of nowhere, I feel like D-Ray was born. Because it was like, this is what I do. This felt like my cousin talking to me. This it felt, felt like, like home. At home. Mm -hmm. And I said, you wish this... And there was two big guys at the time, two real big guys. And I said, you, you wish the joke book was a menu. <sighs> da, 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 da. You so big that I start. Da, 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 da. Roar, roar, yeah. roar. I'm like, first time on stage, I'm tearing this shit out. It was 13 minutes, probably the first three minutes were okay, the next 10 on those guys. It was men at large. Oh no. The group, the group. I'm so alone. You heard that song? Alone. Them two. So one, uh, it was Jim and I, and, and the other guy was David, and they were they were the ones heckling me because that's what they did on Sundays. Oh. I didn't know that, and I roasted them. It came off when I came off stage. Uh, I think Corey Holcomb was there. He was congratulating people, just like oh, da, da, and that was it. I was like, this is it. So after that, you knew that I got booked the next week. Okay, probably the first time that happened to a comedian. Also, thanks okay. guys. And so the rest, of, the, the, the rest of the, how did you, obviously you, you've done lots of comedy, you're known in the comedy world. When did you start getting booked like for TV and movies and stuff like that? Because I felt like it kind of happened well, early on. You know, that's why I love, uh, I love, you know, th that we are being honest on here because comedically I'm always confident and I know what I did. I know I was a wildfire when I came out. Winning the uh, Miller Comedy Search, then coming to LA within a year and winning the, the Comedy Central. Yeah, people don't do that. On the same day I got my comedy, I won, the same day I got my TV deal, that night I went and won the Comedy Central Laugh Riots. Like the same day. Like, it just don't happen. Right. But when you're thinking you don't have to work and you're thinking my natural talent, which I just have a talent to talk, gift yeah. to gab, funny. Yeah. And you don't do the actual work, it shows, like with anything else. Okay. And it showed with my acting, it showed with my immaturity, it <laughs> showed with, there was, like nowadays, they even put people in place, I believe, I hope they do, for a lot of the athletes to tell them, this is what the world is going to give you this first year, be careful, be this and that. Right. That person didn't exist. I, I got sat down, and I, wanna, I don't want to say that no one tried to talk to me. Flex Alexander saw, sat down with me. Okay. He said, D-Ray, when I got here, I got all this money, I bought a McLaren, I bought this. Put your money up. Do this. Don't be so confident. Dwayne Martin sat me. Stop saying you so funny on stage. Let the world say it. But I'm like, I'm Jay-Z with it. Why comedians can't talk like you, rappers you, talk? You have, you do say that you, or you did say before you talk, like you're, you, you're a comedian, kind of like a rapper. Rapper, like, like, like yeah, rapper. you want to, let's see how funny you is. Put your bars. Yeah. Let me go after you and let's not be, let's not take it to the extreme where we're so we're so engulfed in what you're thinking, what you're believing is real beef that you're forgetting about the art. But I forgot about the art of training, and I know I was funny. Like to this day, I know I'm funny, but I also know the jerk D-Ray that wasn't strong enough to carry who the star was supposed to be. Mm. So as soon as I got here, movies were fast too. Tim Story saw me at the Improv. He had me come to. Uh, they allowed me to sit in the castings for barbershop. So. I read Eve. I read when Mike Ely came in, and I'm sitting there going, "Dang, I want a part." Yeah. And I'm turn I forgot who the cast Betty May casting. I forgot, but I'm just sitting there and I'm doing an Ice Cube voice because Ice Cube's not there. So I'm doing a, yeah, you want to go in the bar? I'm doing all that stuff. So you were doing that just reading for him, just to kind of show him I can act too. Okay. Because Tim's in there, he's cracking up, and at the end of this, <clears throat> I got to read for Mike Ely's part. They mm -hmm. let me let me do that, and he's like, "Come on, Mike's a." Star, even yeah. in that moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was no beating that guy. Trained, professional, ready, prepared. Right. And I wasn't. Okay. But what he saw in me was the fact I was ad libbing even during those things. And he said, you know what? I have a part. Okay. So you didn't really you didn't really audition for that part. For the uh, the the dog in I mean the, the I didn't audition for the Ray Ray. Right. No, okay. he he offered me Ray Ray. Okay. And I still was about to mess that up. <laughs> How but so? Just you just weren't prepared? Like Wasn't prepared, just uh, lying. Like I t I'm telling us in here about the marks. That was me back then? Fuck a mark. I was like, well, I stand where I want to stand. <laughs> like, the yeah. Matrix, catch me on camera. Catch me. <laughs> <laughs> catch me you can. So, um, Not fuck a mark. But it did help too because I was supposed to just stick my head in the barbershop and 
my first entrance, I walked all the way in. So then I became, Tim was like, I like it, you know, you fucking up, but I like it. Mm -hmm. And he was such a good director because he was learning at the same time. Ice Cube had produced, but Ice Cube was so giving to all the, if you think about all the people that are on there, yeah. everyone's pretty much successful or, or, or somewhere that he took whatever John Singleton instilled in him. I could see it. I don't know if he ever says this himself, but I could uh -huh. see bringing other people up and, and teaching people as we're on the job, on the job training. Right. And uh, it was fun because after I did my first time walking in a barbershop, I was able to come in with my own things. Like the dogs I came in with, untrained, which is I know now what? illegal. I didn't even know those dogs. <laughs> I got them from the guy on, another guy on set. What you the, mean you didn't know them dogs? Like you just. I said, can I take your dogs in there and sell them? It's one of my jokes. And he's like, yeah, I got these dogs, big one, little one. I was just freestyling. <laughs> then I came in with the Pampers, which were my daughter's Pampers at the time, from out the car. I just wanted to, you know, sell stuff. <laughs> um, if you ever look at the outtakes, I came in with a lot of gang, a gang of stuff, but um, still wasn't prepared though for what the wave would be and not letting them move, uh, not letting my success move together. It was no collaborative effort from the acting and the comedy that it was always an imbalance. Okay. So what I would do with the imbalance is knowing I was funny, I just talked so much that this part, I don't care what y'all doing acting. You got to act because I'm the beast with comedy. Okay. You have to do that because I'm, I just would do that to always. Was that to overcompensate? I believe comedically I, it's a scary place. The stage itself is scary to, in all aspects. You tell somebody to go tell a joke, they're funny. Tell a joke in front of some people, it's, it's yeah, different. It's like yeah, a, yeah. your kid says his ABCs clear as hell when you're just at home, and then you get out and about, say ABCs, D-A-A, -A. you're like, oh my God, this ain't <laughs> what he does at home. So I think, <laughs> I think, I think what I would do is the confidence that radiates from stage, I needed to carry around with me. So I wasn't just telling people I'm the funny, it's I'm the best, I'm this. I was telling myself, so now I had to prove it. Okay. Now I just said, you just went up, that was okay. You did all right. And they're like, D-Ray, get the fuck out of here. I'm like, oh, you saying I ain't gonna be funny? And nobody ever said, you ain't gonna top that. There's only a few comics who loved the competitive nature I had and work with me. Tony Rock, we would go back and forth. Mm -hmm. um, who else got things? Red, Red never backed down, like Gary Owen. These are all guys that they know I talk shit. Yeah. Like Gary knows, like he comes in the room, like D-Ray's gonna talk. It could be anything. Gary, I can tell. I'll tell Gary I was white before you were white before. It's like the Muhammad <laughs> but, Ali. Of, but were you that confidence? Was that before you were a comedian? Like were you always like that? Like with your everyday work, and or did did you kind of bring that with your comedy so that could kind of help damn. you? Damn. Damn no, I, I guess I wasn't always super confident. With I, I think the comedy turned me into a superhero. Okay. I felt like I found it, but I always had, um, like my mom would always tell me, like, there's nothing she said you can't do. Like, if you can't do it, she meant you just can't do it. Like, my mom would be like, you'd be like, I'm joining track. She'd be like, you slow. <laughs> like, that's, don't even, let's not waste our time. Let's not waste like, our time. Like, I had time. a saxophone, my grandfather's saxophone. I was, <laughs> she like, just put it up. I ain't got time. If you're going to play, but, sh but shit you can do, my mom would tell you, the, the thing you're able to do, and I was a salesman, so I was yeah. able to sell myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was confident in comedy, I just had never, and I had never been in love with anything like that before either, so maybe me finding that marriage with me and uh, the mic to be able to express myself in places that I've probably been so <clears throat> closed in and so quiet about, I found this roar. So I was able to, so once I grabbed that roar, I didn't want to let, never let it go, you know what I'm saying? So I wanted to stay on track as far as like where my confidence had gotten me. And now it's like, yeah, it's, it's like you can do that, but I'm not dunking like one out of college. You know what I'm saying? You gotta, you gotta remember who, yeah. who the guy is, not who you throw the alley-oop to now and create that same confidence in people without them having to um, be mean or be, I've already, I feel like I've already paved that well, yeah. You don't have to be a light skin. You don't have people gotta say you light skin mad now. Like I did it. <laughs> All right, I looked out for y'all. Now y'all, we can calm down. They know we tough too. <laughs> now let's just focus on the funny. Cause right. the walls I broke down don't exist. You can't even talk the way I used to talk now. And I don't mean like subject matter. I mean even in confidence, people don't want you in the room. They're like he's a butt. But I had to be. I had to be that dude in the room. I had to. And I think that's why me and the John Singletons clicked. Me and the yeah. people who were the other, the, uh, the alpha conversationalists. Is that a word as well? Because if it is, Let's, I'm doing great in life. Because <laughs> well, these are words you'll probably randomly pick up. I think it's the helping. Oh, 42 <laughs> language. And then, as I was and then, no, and then. Um, Okay, hold on, hold on. We'll, we'll be right back. We're no, gonna, we won't. We're going to no, take we're a pause, back. and we'll be right back.